Benjamin Impossible. Chapter 21. The Deadly Race. Admiral Sandbar's eyes widened. You want us to run? The scientists looked at each other with worried expressions. Rocket scientists were known for their mental agility, not their physical prowess. Benjamin ignored the admiral and turned to Lementheim. Are you a fast runner, Captain? I ran track in high school, but I'm no marathon runner. Benjamin nodded. Then try to keep up with me. I'm sprinting ahead to get the ship's motor running and to prepare the Red Zeppelin for takeoff. Benjamin turned to the adults. I recommend you start jogging now. Head toward the VAB. Stay in a group. Do not leave the road and do not try to go cross country. If you sprain an ankle by taking a shortcut across a ditch, you'll slow the whole pack down. Benjamin made eye contact with his parents. If you haven't reached the turning basin by the time I have the Red Zeppelin airborne, I will fly back and pick you up. Dad, can I have the keys? Papa Impossible tossed the ignition keys to Benjamin, who caught and pocketed them. Mama Impossible smiled and put a hand on her husband's shoulder. Oh, Papa, our little boy is all grown up. Now he's borrowing the family car. Admiral Sandbar's face turned red. Wait a second, kid. Why are you going to the ship first? You'll just fly off without us, you coward. Admiral Sandbar, Mama Impossible exclaimed in shock. Captain Lementime stepped forward and saluted. Sir, respectfully speaking, I have worked closely with young Benjamin. I would call him many things, but a coward is not a word to describe him. He demonstrated bravery and courage during the attempt to rescue his brother. I doubt he would fly off in an airship and abandon his parents to be blown up by a falling asteroid. The admiral looked like he was going to argue, but Benjamin raised his finger. I'll tell you what, admiral, if you can beat me in a foot race to the Red Zeppelin, I'll let you drive. You better come back for us, the admiral snapped back. Be careful, dear, Mama Impossible called. Don't stop and talk to strangers on the way. No problem, Mom, Benjamin turned away. Let's go, Lemonhead. Last one to the ship is a rotten egg. The two ran down the paved road, their feet pounding the asphalt. Benjamin wore shorts and sneakers while the captain was in his standard Air Force fatigues and boots. The boy set a grueling pace and Lemon Time broke into an instant sweat as he tried to keep up. Tell me, Captain, Benjamin said, talking while he ran. Did you know anything about the Navy submarine theft? No, Lemon Time puffed out. This is the first I've heard of it. Yes, Benjamin said, thinking. You claimed ignorance earlier in the investigation. Of course, I didn't know you very well back then. We've only worked together for a week. You still don't know me that well, kid. Benjamin nodded, and they jogged to the right, following a road sign pointing to their destination. I suppose that's true, Captain, though I believe there is a certain camaraderie that forms after going through a battle with another man. You would know more about that, of course. Your military service records are quite extensive. You've looked at my military records? If Captain Lementheim hadn't been running for his life, he would have been more affronted. Oh, sure. Charlie and I ran a deep background check the first day you came on board the ship. If it's any consolation, we went ahead and fixed an error on your credit report and canceled a late fee you owed at your local library. I'm not sure how I feel about that, Lementheim puffed. You'll have to excuse our paranoia, Benjamin explained. My parents are brilliant scientists, but a little naive when it comes to personal safety. Impossible Incorporated is one of the most profitable technology firms on the planet. We are constantly beset with charlatans, lawyers, and corporate spies. We had to make sure you weren't a corporate assassin. I guess that makes sense, the captain begrudged. In fact, Benjamin mused, Charlie was convinced you were the thief who stole the hyperhelium in the first place. Lementime almost tripped barely avoiding a fall to the pavement. What? How could I have been the thief? I was the one who came to tell you about the robbery. Benjamin nodded sagely. True, but most complex jobs like this are inside jobs or involve an accomplice close to the mark. After all, how would the robbers know where the hyperhelium was stashed without an inside man? Wait, did you and Charlie think I was Dr. Glockenspiel? Benjamin laughed. Of course not. You are too young to be Glockenspiel. Plus, Heinrich von Baby Snatcher is from Germany, and you don't have any German phenotypes in your DNA. Lemon Time finally stopped in his tracks, puffing on the side of the road. What DNA? You checked my DNA? Benjamin stopped as well, jogging in place and looked back in surprise. Of course. Remember when I shot you with skunk juice and you had to take a shower? 
Well, afterward, you drank a cup of hot chocolate that mom made for you. Charlie and I swabbed that mug down for DNA from your saliva. Mom is a world-renowned geneticist and has all the equipment to run a PCR analysis of your genetic ancestry. We just ran an electrophoresis of your DNA and compared your phenotype to common geographic patterns for countries around the world. Lemon Time put his hands on his hips, trying to catch his breath. I didn't give you permission to run a DNA scan on me. Benjamin shrugged. Sorry, dude. We had to be sure. You've got English, Dutch, and a little Native American in you. Very few German genes, however. Benjamin started jogging down the road again and pointed to the tall VAB in the distance. We need to keep moving, Captain. Killer meteor from space, remember? Lemon Time grumbled and started running again. His shirt dripped with sweat, and his boots felt like lead anchors as they slapped against the pavement. Benjamin, barely winded, kept talking despite the dirty looks from his running partner. Charlie thought you were the thief. I, however, suspected you might be a cyborg. Lemon Time glanced over at the boy. What's a cyborg? A cyborg is part human and part machine. We knew you had human DNA and your external appearance seemed to be human. However, our adversary was a robotics specialist, and I wondered if you might be part machine inside. At least, you might be carrying some kind of tracking beacon for Dr. Glockenspiel's robots to follow. Are you serious? Lemon Time asked. Fortunately for you, your x-rays all came back normal. You x-rayed me? Lemon Time spluttered in disbelief. Benjamin rolled his eyes. Of course, the first night you slept aboard the Red Zeppelin, I've installed a gamma radiation emitter in the guest bathroom. I ran a complete head-to-toe scan of your body. You're in excellent health. Benjamin looked over and smiled brightly. Next time you see your dentist, you might want to have them check you for cavities. Your lower right bicuspid looks a little suspicious. Probably all that sweet lemonade you drink. You shot my entire body with X-ray radiation to make sure I wasn't a cyborg? Lemon Time growled. Uh, yeah, Benjamin replied. We had to know. X-ray is the gold standard for detecting cyborgs, and it wasn't that much radiation. You weren't planning on having kids, were you? You know what? Lemon Time yelled. I'm not talking to you anymore. Benjamin rolled his eyes. You are such a drama queen. I'm just trying to tell you that I trust you now. I'm fairly positive you are human and that you didn't steal the hyperhelium tanks. Still not talking here. The two ran on, their legs burning and their breath coming out in shallow pants. The Florida sun beat down from above and heat waves rose from the paved road. Captain Lemon Time hadn't been this tired since his days at boot camp and almost had to stop and let Benjamin run ahead. At last, they reached their destination and pounded up the gangplank onto the deck of the Red Zeppelin. Captain Lemon Time fell to the ship's deck, breathing heavily and trying to keep from throwing up. Benjamin was surprised to find someone already on the ship. A man in coveralls cowered in the corner, Noah hovering over him, growling. Who are you? Benjamin panted. I'm Jethro, the janitor, the man replied. They left me behind. Please take me with you, he pleaded. You can come with us, Jethro, Benjamin said. But make yourself useful. We have 15 minutes before this place blows. Cast off those lines tying down the ship. What about this killer robot? The man quivered looking at the robotic dog. Come here, Noah, Benjamin called as he tapped on his wristwatch. The robotic dog floated over and Benjamin tossed him a power bar. The dog caught it in the air and swallowed the battery. Noah, I need you to follow the road back and find mom. Fly toward the radio signal emitting from her wrist communicator. Once you find mom, hover 200 feet in the air over her position so I can locate her. The robotic dog barked once and zoomed off rocketing down the distant road at high speed. Captain Lemon Time climbed wearily to his feet. How can I help? I need you to run the hyperhelium gas valves. Go over to that lever and hold it down for three seconds, then stop. Benjamin sat down in the cockpit and put the keys in the ignition. The engines roared to life and the propellers spun up to speed. Lemon Time pulled the gas lever and with a hiss, the balloon above them vibrated as hyperhelium injected into the envelope. The boat lifted several feet above the water, and Benjamin eased down on the accelerator. The propeller fans roared and the ship moved forward. They floated across the turning basin, skimming several feet over the water. Hit that lever again, Benjamin yelled at the captain. Lemon Time pushed the lever, but nothing seemed to happen. I'm pushing, but I don't hear anything, he yelled back. Oh, crud nuggets, Benjamin wailed. 
We must be out of gas. You're out of fuel? Benjamin turned the wheel of the boat and the red zeppelin leaned to the left, turning back to the shoreline. We have plenty of fuel, doofus. We are out of hyperhelium gas. The tanks must be empty. Glockenspiel has the only generator now and Dad must have used up our reserves to fly us here. Lemontime pointed at the balloon above. But the balloon still has hyperhelium, right? Enough to get this ship a few feet off the ground, but not enough to take off into the air. Captain, I suggest you brace yourself. This is going to get bumpy. Benjamin gripped the wheel with white knuckles and slammed down the accelerator. The ship rocketed over the surface of the pond, the front of the boat tipping down alarmingly close to the surface of the water. We're going to hit the shore, Jethro yelled out as he wrapped his legs around the mast and covered his head with his hands. Before the ship struck the shoreline, Benjamin led up on the throttle. The front of the boat tilted and the boat slid up the muddy bank, which served as a ramp to launch the ship into the sky. The jolt shook the red zeppelin and threw Captain Lemontime to the deck. Benjamin held on for dear life as the vessel shot up into the air. The boy laughed triumphantly. We may not be able to fly the red zeppelin, but she can still bounce. You've reached the end of chapter 21. Please like this video or leave a comment. Then continue to chapter 22, Driving Lessons.